Red blood cells have their own lifespan. They only exist for about 100 to 120 days in circulation. So after this period of time, they die. And there's a specific um, manner in which this happens. So red, the reason red blood cells only survive this long is that they are a nucleate. So since they don't have a nucleus, they are not capable of mitosis for cell division. So after 100, 120 days, the red blood cell membranes become fragile and the hemoglobin itself begins to deteriorate. So the red blood cell breaks into pieces. The red blood cell um, dies and the red blood cell graveyard is the spleen. So the red blood cell breaks apart into a couple of components, uh, one of which is the heme group. And that heme is broken down into bilirubin, a pigment that's degraded by the liver. The liver se is, secretes the bilirubin in the bile and it's secreted as the pigment urobilinogen and then trans transformed into this brown pigment, which is in the feces. However, the rest of it is in the formation of uh, the protein globin, and that's going to be metabolized into amino acids, which are released for re to be reused in circulation. So some erythrocyte disorders that you should be familiar with are those that have to do with low hematocrit or high hematocrit. Low hematocrit is what we refer to as anemia, and there are a few different types of anemia. High hematocrit is the disorder called polycythemia. So the reasons where we find patients with anemia are those that experience blood loss, so that could be one cause. Not enough red blood cells produced, so perhaps there's damage to the bone marrow where red blood cells are produced, or conversely, there's too many red blood cells that are destroyed, red blood cell destruction. So, um, one type of anemia that you should be aware of is hemorrhagic anemia, where there is sudden red blood cell loss in the case of maybe a stab wound. There could be chronic hemorrhagic anemia, perhaps due to something like hemorrhoids or maybe a bleeding ulcer. Um, another type of anemia is iron deficiency anemia because that iron is necessary to synthesize that hemoglobin. Another important type is pernicious anemia. And with pernicious anemia, the key to remember here is that it has to do with the intrinsic factor an intrinsic factor is vital so that vitamin B12 can be absorbed from the diet. The next type of anemia is renal anemia, which is a problem with the kidney. So damage to the kidney could, pre could prevent the production of erythropoietin, which remember is the hormone that stimulates the red bone marrow to make red blood cells. Another type of anemia, uh, there's a couple types that have to do with uh, genetic causes. And there's another type called aplastic anemia. The aplastic anemia has to do with something, uh, some malfunction of the red bone marrow, usually caused by radiation, drugs, viruses, possibly. The two types of genetic disorders that you should know, the two types of anemia are thalassemia, and sickle cell anemia. In this case, there is a type of hemoglobin in the case of thalassemia where a globin chain is faulty and there's a misshaped red blood cell. In the case of sickle cell anemia, there's a crescent-shaped um, hemoglobin and this is especially prevalent in the continent of Africa. They call this the African malarial belt. So people that have this, there is one benefit of malaria if there is such a thing.
But the one benefit is that people with sickle cell anemia do not contract malaria. So what this looks like in sickle cell anemia is instead of having this beautiful, nice, biconcave red blood cell, the lack of this one single amino acid from the translation of this protein is going to produce a crescent-shaped or sickle-shaped sickle red blood cell, especially when the red blood cell has to pass into a very thin capillary is where we find this. Now the opposite end of this spectrum is a very high hematocrit where we find polycythemia. And polycythemia is an abnormal excess of red blood cells. So there's a high blood viscosity giving off a sluggish blood flow because of this extreme thickness and the hematocrit can be as high as 80%, which can be very, very lethal. There's a couple ways in which this happens. There's um, secondary polycythemia caused by low levels of oxygen, high altitude. Um, but this also can happen through blood doping. And blood doping is um, what some athletes do to gain a disadvantage, I'm sorry, gain an advantage to carry much more oxygen than their competitor. However, because of the sluggish blood, there's a risk for clot formation, the possibility of stroke, or in an increase in blood pressure.